What's up guys? So I've been getting a lot of questions about, you know, how do I use VPA um, and how we can go about using it. So first I'm going to start off with, you know, my setup on the VPA. So it's under indicators and then I'm going to go to technicals, volume profile, and then it is the volume profile visible range indicator. Uh, within the indicator, I did ch change it a little bit. So the first preset is uh, for row size on trading view is 24. I just moved it up to 25. Um, nothing too crazy, but that is the volume profile that I use. In terms of how I use it on a daily chart or a weekly chart is, you see these bigger nodes here? This means that price is going to uh, move slower within these regions. Um, so this level here from about 34 down to 32.6 is a pretty big volume profile. It just shows that there's a bunch of volume traded within um, this range. And then also this range here from 35.69 to 37.17. Um, price is going to move slower within these big volume nodes here, but faster once we get over and close above and then up to the next bigger volume node up here. So this can really help us with seeing how fast um, a play could potentially move. Here on pins, what I liked yesterday's setup, I'm gonna go to the weekly, actually the daily is nice too. So looking at this range here, once we get this close under 31.40, um, there's a nice gap over here, which also leaves us with a nice volume gap down to about 25.75. So this means that this range could move really fast. Um, it also shows where the next big support level is. Um, for in pins case, it looks like 2575 is our next level. So this can help me with you know where to take profits or where the potential bounce could come. If we were to close over this range here um, at about 3688, I would expect my next big resistance to be around 42.40 um, just off of this profile here. So we can play it on both sides. Um, and then this big red line here is the POC. It's where people are stepping in to take a position either um, bullish or bearish. If the POC is above current price, this is bearish, um, meaning sellers are in control. If the price were to be, or the POC were to be below price, this would be bullish, meaning um, this is probably where a pullback will happen and then a bounce based just off of that POC where people are stepping in pretty heavy. Um, we can also use this intraday. So I'm gonna use SPY here on the five minute. Zoom in a little bit. So if we look here on SPY, you know there's a gap down this morning. Um, and most of our range is traded within this 427 to about 432 level. So I know that price is going to move slower within these levels. But if we can close above this, um, even down here about 432 level, there's a nice volume gap up to the POC um, around 438.55 and then test that POC at 439.17. So this can really help you know, with seeing how fast a play could move, but also where should I look for um, either a support or a resistance level um, in terms of if we're in a short, looking for that level where we could potentially bounce back up um, and you know exit out of our position. Um, in terms of a long, um, it can show us where the next big resistance is and where what levels are really going to play um, more of a significant resistance in terms of just straight volume traded. Um, another thing, if we close above that POC and then retest, um, we usually get a pretty nice move. Um, it obviously was a little bit different up here, but you see we get this close um, right here above POC, we retest the key level, and then we get a pretty nice little uptrend here on SPY, even though the overall trend is a downtrend. Once we close under this level, you know it's a pretty fast move down as well. When it comes to how I really incorporate it into my system, I used it a lot to identify how big a possible support or resistance are or how, um, you know, where these key levels are as well as setting targets. Um, it really helps with the setting targets part because the bigger the node, the slower the price action is going to move. And also, most of the times, 
um, it'll test that zone and then either reject or if we can start consolidating within the zone, close above the zone and bounce, we get a nice move upwards in this case. So that really helps me with, you know, more just being more prepared um, to take a trade or where I'm going to see levels where I need to scale out. And that's really, really how I use VPA. I like it a lot when you couple it with those key levels um, as well. If we look here on the SPY daily chart, we can see that, you know, there's, there's some congestion in here, but underneath that 442 level, there was a nice gap down um, to about 435, um, which was a nice level here. And then underneath that, you know, if I scroll back out, um, the POC is all the way down here at 417.27. So I would expect buyers to step in pretty heavy at that 417 level. Um, you know, SPY is very, very weak right now. So I'm going to wait um, in terms of really being sold on a long position around that 417.25 level on the daily. Um, I think that's something, you know, we will test here in the near future. We do have FOMC speaking on Wednesday. So the market's very, very volatile um, today. And I wouldn't expect, you know, a crazy move in either direction until these um, talks are done with. So that's something I'm really watching there as well. But basically how I use it, you know, it really just helps me with where to scale, set price targets, and also assessing key levels. Um, the higher the volume node, the more significant. But once we can close above or below, we usually move faster in between zones as opposed to these big volume nodes here where more shares were traded of the ticker so therefore there's a lot more congestion here right so this is how you know how i use um, po vpa it's not an exact science by any means but it does help a lot when it comes to really preparing for a trade knowing where to scale um, and knowing where either a buyer or a seller is going to step in as well as identifying these possible big plays when we couple that with the flow the key levels it can really really help um, to really notice where these big play potentials are. So I like that a lot, especially when making the watch list. It really helps me there identify or take some tickers out um, that don't have as big of a VPA gap. If I see a VPA gap on the 15 and there's nice ranges um, on some of these tickers, I like those plays a lot. And it'll help me choose those over other tickers who don't have VPA gaps. There's a lot more congestion. Um, so that's something that I really, really like with VPA. When it comes to building my watch list and really you know, using that flow and the levels, how I incorporate it is, so I'm gonna use pins as an example again. We see nice calls on this 128.35 call here on pins. So that's something that really sticks out to me, right? Is there's nice flows, pretty out of the money, um, close days till expiration. So I noticed that. Now I'm gonna go in after I look through the flow and I'm gonna look you know, at certain tickers. Is there a nice VPA gap on the daily? Um, in this case, pins, there's a very nice VPA gap on the daily. Um, there was this gap down here, but underneath this level, you know, there's not too much until we talked about this 2685 and 2575 level here with pins. But then when I break it down on the intraday, there's also nice VPA gaps here on pins. Um, on the one hour chart, we see, whoa, we see, you know, there's a little, little, um, two nodes here, little cluster, but there's not too much until up here, and there wasn't much underneath on pins either. So that's really nice to see. Um, and then also again on the 15, it was pretty similar. We had this bit, nice cluster here, not too much on the upside or the downside. So I like that play a lot, and that's how you know I go about selecting those five tickers when it comes to. Tickers that have similar flow, um, nice levels that we can see, but the one determining factor could be, you know, are there nice VPA gaps with the potential for big moves on either side of the ticker? And that's really how I really, really like to incorporate VPA, especially when um, going about making a watch list, is, you know, where are these big move potentials? Um, and that narrows it down to those three to five tickers. I focus on those three to five. Coupled that with the flow, um, key levels, VPA, it can really, really help not only become self-sufficient, but also um, where are we going to take profits, right? Or where are we going to look for a possible bounce if we're in a position?